Hi guys, this is Blake from the Blake Image Photography. I'm a commercial photographer based in Brisbane, Australia, and today I want to take you through something a little bit different. We're going to be retouching a landscape image using only Lightroom. Uh, we're not going to be touching Photoshop at all. I want to show you the power of Lightroom and uh, some tricks you can use on images yourself uh, to get some stunning images. So let's jump over to Lightroom. I've got an image open already. Um, this is an image I took in Japan during a recent trip uh, late last year. We're going to be working with the develop tab on this uh, image. And develop's going to bring us up all our tools and settings that we need to be changing here. Um, now this image was taken probably late afternoon uh, up in the mountains of Japan. So lighting's pretty good. It's uh, There's not too many highlights, harsh shadows and things like that, which is perfect. Um, having a quick look at the image, there's a few things we're going to need to clean up, but we can do that a little bit later on as well. So first thing I'm going to do is work from the top, make my way down, and I'll talk through each of the tools as we use them. So first thing we're going to start with is our white balance. You can see here, little WB. Um, the eyedropper you can use if you wanted to select a uh, white balance sample. So for example, if you, if you had an interior shot and you had some white walls, you could click this eyedropper, click on the white wall, and that would give you an accurate white balance for that image. In this case, because we're doing some outdoor scenery type stuff, I'm going to click on white balance. I'm going to use a preset of, um, let's start with cloudy. Gives you like a nice warm feel. Shade takes a little bit warmer again. I think cloudy is going to work fine. So we'll start there as a starting point. Next thing I want to do is start moving some of these sliders around. So exposure wise, I think is fine. We'll leave that as it is for now. Um, this was taken at five seconds F18 on ISO 100. Um, at 40 mils using a 17 to 40 f4 lens on a 5ds camera um, Let's bump our contrast up a little bit. I'm going to adjust this to plus 20. Just bring out a bit more contrast I'm going to start by bringing my highlights down um, Probably Let's go 90. I'm going to open up my shadows a bit. This is going to give the image more of a HDR type feel you don't want to push the sliders too much, otherwise it's going to look like you've just used a HDR preset filter, um, which can be good depending on what you're trying to do, um, but most of the time you want to avoid that sort of look. Now we move down to the whites and blacks. A trick here you can use if you're using a PC, hold Alt. When you click on the slider, the image turns black. That way if you slide your slider, you can see where the whites start coming in. Now what we're looking for is um, a part on the slider before we start getting white. So these white spots you see on the screen, that means we're now 100% white. We've lost all detail in that uh, section of the image. So we want to dial it back a little bit until we just start seeing, so we just start seeing those spots. So somewhere around 31. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for the black. Hold the Alt key, slide it back this time. This time blacks come in, means we're going to get 100% black. And you can see this on the histogram moving as well at the top of the page. So. This time we want to bring a little bit more in, so some yellows, some blacks, um, not too much. So maybe be somewhere around, I think negative 25 should work fine. Um, now anytime you can hit the backslash key, which is below your backspace, and that can compare your original image to where you are at the moment. And as you can see already, we've already made the image pop quite a bit. Um, so let's keep on going. Clarity, I'm going to dial this up to uh, let's go 20. Vibrance, I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Maybe 10, and saturation. Um, we don't want to push it too far. It may be somewhere around 15. Oh, let's go 10. <clears throat> okay. Next part down, we've got tonal curves. Uh, this is the same as you'd use in Photoshop using a curves uh, filter or a curves adjustment layer. Um, the same principle applies. You can create S curves and things like that should you want to. In this case, we're just going to leave it as it is for now. We can fine tune that a little later on. Moving down, you've got your hue, saturation, uh, luminance, color, and black and white layers. So we can adjust different um, luminosities of the greens, things like that. Again, we'll touch that a little bit later. Split toning is if you want to do cross processing. So if you want to try and um, apply a different color to the highlights and shadows, give that a sort of cinematic feel, you can do that as well. Again, we'll touch on that very shortly. Sharpening um, is pretty straightforward. Sharpens the image. Again, we'll come back to this. And then the thing we're looking for at the moment is lens correction. So provided you're shooting in a raw format, which you should be, if you're not shooting in raw, you're not going to have a lot of these options. Uh, but if you're shooting in raw, you can come down to lens corrections. 
and you can tick these two boxes. One is going to remove chromatic aberrations and chromatic aberrations are when you zoom into a um, an object and you've got like the colored halo around it. This is going to get rid of that for you. So by default, I normally tick these um, anyway. Profile correction is going to pull the correct profile for your lens that you're using. You'll notice when I click that, the vignetting that you get from using the wide angle 17 to 40 disappears um, and gets brightened up a little bit. And it does correct the perspective and distortion of the image automatically. If you're using some sort of uh, weird third party lens like a Sang, um, uh, I can't remember the name of it, like a Sigma or something like that, they should all be in here. Um, you can see they've got a lot of manufacturers, a lot of different lenses in here. And as you're updating Lightroom, obviously these profiles will be updated as well. So <clears throat> let's go back up to the top. Now, the image is looking fairly good so far. What we might do is start playing with some of these tools at the top. So we've got the crop tool, which is pretty straightforward. You use it to crop your image, resize it, things like that. Um, we will do that towards the end. I like to bring it in to make it look a bit more cinematic, but we'll leave it for now. The next tool across is spot removal, similar to the healing brush and things like that you'd see in um, Photoshop. Let's do that right now. We've got this ugly sort of cable that holds some trees up here. Using square brackets, you can adjust your brush size. Um, left and right obviously increases or smaller or reduces the brush size. And what you want to do, it's pretty simple. Click, drag across the object that you want to mask out and Lightroom will automatically select a similar uh, texture for you to copy across. If you don't like what Lightroom selected, you can move that across and choose something else. But generally it does a pretty good job in predicting what you're trying to do. So I'll put that here. Click the spot tool again, that'll get rid of it. Um, <clears throat> looking for any other objects that are catching my eye that we can get rid of. Maybe this leaf down here as well. So let's get our spot tool. Click on that. Probably gonna look better with a bit more like foliage and stuff. So over there is pretty good. Spot tool again. This guy down here. If you've got any questions or um, <clears throat> if I haven't explained something correctly, please leave a comment below and I can answer your questions that you might have. Or if, even if you've got something, um, you know, a better process, or if you find that you do something a bit better than I'm doing, by all means, let me know. Um, this is more for an educational purpose. I just like sharing my passion for landscape photography and I hope you can learn something from it. So, um, okay, I think that's pretty good for the, the spot tool. So. Next thing I want to do, move across, um, red eye correction. We're not going to use this obviously because we've got no eyes. This is if you've got like, a, you know, if you take a picture with a flash camera, you get the red red pupils. You can use that to correct it. Um, very simple. Next one across is the graduated filter. Now these, this is probably one of the most powerful tools in uh, Lightroom. So typically what you'll do with a landscape image or if you're taking photos of landscapes is you use what's called a graduated ND filter a graduated neutral density filter and what that does is it will reduce the amount of light uh, by a number of stops based on the strength of the ND filter you have. So for example if you're out on the beach and you're taking a uh, picture of a sunset or even just in the middle of the day or something like that your sky is always going to be overexposed compared to your foreground. So the idea of the neutral density filter is it reduces the sky or you know the, the top half of your lighter image by a number of stops to bring it in balance with the rest of your image. Um, they can be expensive depending on what ones you get. Leaf filters are pretty expensive. Um, you can get some cheaper Perspex ones, but typically what they'll do is they'll give you like a color cast on your uh, on your final image, which can be corrected in Photoshop, but obviously it's a lot easier if you have it straight out of camera. Um, if you don't have a neutral and uh, an ND filter at all, this is where this graduated ND filter comes in handy. So I'll give you an idea of what it looks like. So we select our ND filter, similar to making a, uh, a gradient in uh, in Photoshop. You just click, drag down. It's going to make a gradient for us. That looks pretty good. And you get a new set of tools for this gradient itself. So you can reduce the exposure. You can overexpose it. Um, in this instance, what I think I'm going to do is pump it up a little bit here just for the top half. So I'm going to go 0 0.6 on the exposure. I'm going to bring my contrast filter, uh, my contrast slider up a little bit even more. 20. I'm going to add some warmth to it by increasing the tint to about 10. Temperature, sorry. Temperature to yellows and tint toward magenta. Maybe like something subtle like 7. 
I'm going to bring the clarity up, which is going to increase um, the contrast and sharpness of some of the objects in that filter to about 20. And we can probably leave the saturation as it is. So let's click off that now. So that's good. Now what I'm going to do is add a second uh, graduated ND filter. So if I click on this again, this time I'm going to make one on the bottom. I'm going to drag from the bottom up. Now, if you've dragged and the gradient is on the wrong side, you can select this middle line here and then drag it around, flip it around, whichever way you want to put it. You can put it on an angle if you want to do it that way, um, which I might actually do for the bottom here. So I'm going to set this here. This time I'm going to reduce the exposure by probably yeah, two thirds of a stop. Bring this down a little bit. You can shrink the um, the graduated ND filter, and what that will do is it will uh, it will I guess decrease the sharpness or increase the sharpness rather of the actual um, the gradient itself. Now that's here again. Let's bring in some contrast. Bring down the highlights a little bit. Open the shadows. And there's no right or wrong way of doing this. Uh, feel free to have a play around and, and you know find something that, that you like. My style of landscape photography is typically warmer images. So you'll see me using a lot of oranges, yellows, things like that. I like a warmer feeling image. Um, other photographers prefer cooler images, you know, um, gives the, the, the feeling of being a nighttime or a winter scene or something like that. So it's really up to you, uh, personal preference. <clears throat> now, now that we're done with the graduated filters, Next one we move across is the radial filter. Now this is exactly the same as the gradient filter, but uh, we're dealing with circles this time, right? So this is really cool uh, to use for dodge and burning in Lightroom. So I'll give you an example. We'll do some dodging and burning now. So we're going to select our radial filter and you want to drag circles where you want to brighten or darken the image or dodge and burn um, as we call it in photography. So <clears throat> let's start with here. I'm going to grab a circle here. Down the bottom, I want to click invert. What that's going to do, because right now we're affecting inside or outside the radius of the uh, the circle. If we click invert, it's going to do the inside, which is what we want. So now that I've got my circle created, I'm going to reduce my exposure down to zero point, um, yeah, zero point six. I think works. You can change the shape of this too if you want to make it an oval or bigger or smaller or whatever you want to do. You can also adjust the amount of feathering that's on it as well, in which case I'm going to move this to about probably 70 or so. That way it's just not so noticeable when you're looking at the image, a big white spot on the, uh, on the, uh, on the grass. Now, <clears throat> easiest way to get this, uh, I guess, duplicated, if you hold Control and Alt, click and drag, you'll make a second one. This just makes life a bit easier rather than having to draw 300 circles. And you want to put these in positions that you want to lighten up the image a little bit, make them pop somewhat. And again, this is up to you, personal preference as to where you think uh, you should be lightening or darkening. I like to put emphasis on the water because that's basically the hero of my shot here. And again, you've got individual sliders, right? So you can adjust clarity contrast on these uh, radio filters as well. So I'm going to increase the clarity on the water ones, bring out the rocks a bit more. <clears throat> okay, just about done with this. And what dodging and burning does is it gives the image a dimension it wouldn't normally have. Um, so for example, when I'm doing interior shots or architecture shots and things like that, the feedback I often get from the client is that there's something about the image that makes it pop, but they can't tell what it is. And I can say with certainty, it's dodging and burning. And you see it a lot with portraiture and things like that as well. Lifestyle images, um, more high-end commercial advertising images, 
you can see dodging and burning on uh, the highlights of the face, skin, arms, legs, things like that. It's a very common tool and it was actually used back in the, the, the darkroom days when you were processing images from film. Uh, let's do one more here. Gonna pump this one up just a little bit. Bit of clarity, bit of contrast. Okay, so if we hit our backspace or backslash again, rather, <clears throat> you can see where we are now. So you can see we've added pockets of light here in some of the green areas. It just makes it pop a bit more. Uh, now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but we're going to go darker. So we're going to be burning the image. So let's select our radial filter again. You can also use the brush tool as well if you want to brush individual areas. Um, I just prefer the radial filter. I will use the brush for a few things, which you'll see coming up shortly. But for now, let's just get some burning going with the radial filter. Same thing, we're going to tick invert, set feather to 100%. Bring this down here. And I want to go a bit subtle on the, the exposure here. So I'm only going to bring it down a third of a stop. Control and Alt to duplicate our filter again. And we're just going to put this in places that are going to benefit the image the most. Here. <clears throat> and you don't want to go too dark in some places like this this area over here under the uh, the trees and, and shrubbery um, it's probably dark enough as it is if we go any darker it's going to look black um, and pretty messy so I'm going to leave that the way it is put that there let's put another one at the back here there was a brick wall at the back up the end of this stream <clears throat> and what I want to do is increase the clarity see if we can bring out some of that brick work Roll up, duplicate again, make this a long one, and we can probably do one more, just over here in the rocks, I think. At any time, if you want to adjust these individual uh, radial filters, all these little dots that get put on the screen are your individual circles. So you can click on them with the hand and it brings up the settings for those. So I just want to reduce the clarity on this one a little bit because it's pulled across from another one. So I'm going to bring this down to zero because I don't really want to sharpen up this grassy area. <clears throat> okay, so let's back, uh, backslash again. We're making some progress. I think it looks pretty good. So, what we might do now before we start sharpening up these rocks and things like that, I want to make the green pop a little bit more. So, what we'll do is we'll slide down to our HSL, uh, Hue Saturation and Luminosity layer. And next to it, you've got a little uh, circle with a, a dot in the middle. And what this does is you can actually select points on the picture or your image and increase um, the values based on what you're clicking. So, it's just a bit easier than trying to dial in each of these individual sliders so for example let's go to our hue i'm going to click on my little circle and i want to adjust this level of green next to the rocks here i'm going to click slide your mouse up to increase or slide your mouse down to decrease so if you wanted to go for like a strong autumn look you could go this way um, if you wanted to make it more i guess seasonal and, and, and vibrant you'd probably go the other way in this case, um, I probably want to dial it up a little bit. I'm just trying to decide which which way I want to go here. Actually, no. Let, let's let's bring it down. A lot of the other images I've done would have been pretty green, so let's bring it down. Give it more of an autumn type feel, or fall, I think you would call it in the United States. So I think there's pretty good. We're going to do the same thing with luminance. So go across to luminance, click the little dot, click on the same sample point that we were using before. And this is going to add overall uh, luminosity to the image. If you slide it all the way down, it's going to become very bland. If you slide it all the way up, it's going to go too bright. So you want to find a happy medium in the middle. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Cool. <clears throat> okay. Next thing we want to do is 
Um, you can also increase saturation. We'll touch on that just a little bit. Same process as before. You can select a little circle, click on a point here, and we can increase or decrease depending on what we want to do. So I'll just marginally increase about 5% on the yellow and green. Now, when we're done with that, we're going to use our brush tool, adjustment brush, which is next to our radial filter. Before we do that, I'm going to zoom in on the rocks here. With my brush selected, I'm going to leave my exposure at zero. I'm going to increase my clarity to about 60. And what I want to do here is bring out some of the details on the rocks around the river. Which is uh, in a way sharpening and adding contrast to the image. Holding space, you can pan around the image, um, letting go will bring up the tool that you're currently using. So let's just sharpen some of these rocks. It's a subtle change, but you'll see when we zoom out. Okay, a little bit more here. Alrighty, cool. So let's click off our brush. Now I'm just wondering, looking at these here, I might add a bit of contrast too, perhaps. Maybe 15 or so. Okay, deselect my brush, zoom back out. Before and after. And you can see with the sharpening and the clarity tool on the brush, um, even here, it just makes the rock, rocks pop a lot more uh, before we even start sharpening the image. So, and while we're in here, actually, I might get rid of this little little bush. It's it's distracting me. So, same thing. Spot removal tool. Let's shrink the size down using square brackets. Select our little ugly tree. And we just want to put it in a location that's not going to... There we go. Oh. Just go back in there again real quick. <laughs> Control Z will undo any actions that you need to undo. Same as Photoshop. Um, all right, it's looking pretty good, I think. Let's go back to the top of our screen. Um, we're now going to just play with the overall exposure a little bit. Might just add a bit of exposure, 0 0.2. Um, now, before I forget, there's another cool thing you can do as well. Right down the bottom below where we added the um, chromatic aberration and profile correction corrections to the image, you can scroll down a little bit more and towards the bottom you've got camera calibration and what this does is it will compensate for um, any settings that you might have on your camera so if it's um, if there's particular tints or color casts and things like that that your, your camera is pulling you can correct it here but what another cool option is is you can click on profile and there's some default ones you can use here faithful landscape monochrome neutral portrait standard and they'll give you a pretty unique look as well. So even selecting landscape, you can see it applies, and it's actually done a pretty good job. Um, if we go back to standard, you'll see our standard image is, is pretty good, but when we bring our landscape profile in, it just brings a bit more, um, I guess, depth and, and detail to the image. So we might leave that actually. It, it's come out pretty good. It's subjective to the images that you're working on as well. I've had some images where uh, it doesn't come out very nicely at all, uh, but for this, I think it's worked pretty well. All right, so <clears throat> while we're touching through everything on Lightroom, I'll show you how we use cross-processing or split toning as well. Um, very simple, highlights and shadows. Now, the idea of split toning is you apply a color to your highlights and your shadows, and usually they're complementary, so um, blue and yellow or um, 
anything like that. There's a cool website you can use called Adobe Color or Cooler, uh, which brings up a color wheel. It'll show you all the um, color combinations, what, you know, whether you want complementary colors or similar colors, things like that. It's very good even for a designer. If you're a graphic designer, it's a great tool to have. Um, so let's click on our highlights, the little gray square next to highlights. Click on that guy there. It'll bring up a color palette. We'll choose a, a fairly muted um, yellow for our shadows. We'll cho choose a fairly, fairly muted blue. And you can see already that it, it changes the image fairly drastically. Um, let's go like almost a, a lilac-y type purple. Uh, saturation in, on both sliders obviously increases the intensity of that image or the, uh, the color selection you've made. On this case, I want to keep it fairly low because I don't want it to have too much of an impact. So I'm going to set both saturations to 20. Balance will, incre uh, will adjust, um, I guess, the balance between the two. So if you slide it all the way up, your highlight's going to take preference. If you slide it all the way to the left, your shadow's going to come in. Um, in this case, we're just going to move it slightly to the right at negative 15. That way we just give our purpley shadows a bit more of preference. Um, okay, cool. Let's have a little look at our before and after again. And Lightroom is a very cool tool if you're, you know, someone on Instagram that likes posting Instagram pictures that are polished. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great tool. I know even with the new CC or Creative Cloud application, it can be pretty expensive on its subscription model. So even if you have Lightroom, you can still produce very uh, stunning images with some very simple tools. You don't need Photoshop to do something pretty magical these days. Um, plenty of images I have hung up around the house have been done just using uh, Lightroom purely based on time and things like that that I've had to dedicate toward it. So now, a few finishing touches, we're pretty much done. Let's move down to sharpening. And there's a fairly simple formula that I use for sharpening. The amount um, I'm gonna use, let's go 70. Uh, let's go 80, there's a few rocks and stuff. Let's go 80. Uh, masking, so if you hold the Alt key again, click on the mask slider, what you can see is what areas are gonna be sharpened. So the areas um, in white are gonna be sharpened. Obviously at zero, everything's gonna be sharpened at 100 very little is going to be sharpened. So we don't really want that nice, uh, smooth, creamy water sharpened. So what we're going to do is slide it into a place where our water is not too affected, but everything else is. So I think about 70 should work fairly well. Luminance, noise reduction. Um, I normally take the amount of sharpening and subtract it from 100. So in this case, 100 take 80. We're going to put 20 for the luminance. And you can adjust this a little bit as well, depending on, on your feel for the image. Um, okay, what we'll do now is we'll slide down a little further toward the bottom. We'll have post crop vignetting. Um, actually, before we get there, let's finish off a couple other. I'll show you some other tricks you can do. Now, another cool you can, uh, cool trick you can use with these gradial filters and, and um, circular filters and things like that is you can create artificial light and create sun, um, directional light, all sorts of cool stuff. So, to give you an example, let's go ahead and select our um, radial filter again. Let's make a fairly large circle here. And we're going to bring that across to the top of the stream. We're going to invert the selection, increase the feathering to 100. I'm going to dial up the exposure. Maybe three and a half. I'm going to bring down, bring down the shadows. Now, because I've already used the um, gradial or graduated filter at the top to brighten it, it is a little bit bright already, so we might not end up using this. But this is a cool way to show you how you can actually create light in your images from different directions, um, just to give a whole new dimension to your, your image, I suppose. So let's see if we can find a place that works. It'd be cool to show you this trick, so... Um, maybe up here somewhere. Yeah, okay. Let's dial it back a little bit. Let's go to like 2.5. Clarity we can bring down. We don't need to make that too crazy. Um, highlights we will... 
and as we'll bring down blacks will adjust a little bit okay cool so even just that adjustment gives a whole new I guess directional light to the the image itself um, it's a great way to create flare uh, flares in your images you'll see a lot of portrait photography and stuff like that that have um, you know lens flares in the background this is a great way to do that artificially if you aren't comfortable doing it straight out of camera um, it's a very cool tool to use so let's start finishing uh, finishing this up here I'll scroll down to the bottom make some last touches I want to click to my crop tool before I do that and I'm just going to crop the bottom a little bit just to give it a more of a um, cinematic type panorama feel we're going to scroll down to post crop vignetting add a small vignette of say maybe minus 10 and we can adjust our midpoint a little bit as well. Midpoint is going to be where the vignetting comes in from. So I'll leave that as 40. Uh, and that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, this is a super quick tutorial. Um, there's plenty more we can dive into with Lightroom in different, different videos as well. This is the first sort of video I've made of a tutorial. Um, if I've missed the mark somewhere, please let me know. If you've got any feedback, please let me know. But I think, uh, I think this has been helpful and I hope you do take away something from it. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback, thoughts, uh, any way I can improve something I've done here. Maybe you've got a method that you use yourself you'd like to share. Please do so by leaving a comment below. Um, and until then, uh, I will chat to you next time. And it's been great.